I'm Scott. I drive a Chevy Silverado with over 440,000 miles. My name is Nick, and uh, I used to drive a 98 Chevy, Chevy Silverado, and it had 150,000 miles on it. I'm Scott. I have a Chevy Tahoe because I live in the suburbs, and I have 191,000 miles on it. I'm Eric. I've got a GMC Sierra. I've always had Chevy pickups. This one's only got 189,000 miles on it, and my gauge cluster just went out, so I could have more miles. I don't know. In the days following Tesla's Cybertruck announcement, I noticed a lot of analysts suggesting that the radical design wouldn't sell in the Midwest or in colder climates. The idea being that real pickup owners wouldn't be interested. Luckily, Thanksgiving in the U.S. was the week afterward, and I'm related to a lot of Minnesota truck owners. Between dinner and pie, I was able to have four of them sit down and take a look. Now, I'm obviously a Tesla fan, but I'm still a little unsure about the truck and I asked them to be completely honest with their feedback. I have no recollection of that, Your Honor. The only editing I've done is taken out my rambling in between sections. I answered questions where I could, but I don't have all the answers, and I'm sure we'll get more info in the next couple years before the truck comes out. Let's get into it and see what they had to say. Just see bit, I seen yeah. it backed up to a, a Ford one, and then that was just an ad. That was it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and like these are the main specs. I don't know if you want to like look at that first. So it's a pretty funky shape. Is that a military vehicle? <laughs> Stainless steel. I like that Stainless. Part. And so yeah, it doesn't run, rust, doesn't dent. They did a window test with their shatterproof glass and shattered it. It's yeah, so, it's, oh yeah, so, I saw that part. Yeah. Yeah. It's electric, right? Yeah, all electric. So the base model has 250, 250 308, tri motor 500. Goes that zero to 60 on that tri motor is nuts. 2.9 seconds. That's crazy. Yeah, that's like wait, that's, yeah, that's, that's seconds, yeah. not minutes. Like yeah. my truck. <laughs> <laughs> Top speed, yeah. 4999. That, does, that doesn't scare anybody. Two of the people at this table drive things that cost more than that. I'm not one of them. I'm not one of them. Either. I'm not one of them. Nora. Okay. Nora. <laughs> okay, they're upstairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. My truck has 440,000 miles. Yeah. Look at the payload there. That's Where the do you put uh, over a ton and a half? <laughs> yeah, in that. In there, in this back. is the thing we just saw, right? Yep. yep. Same so the back Stainless. slides up, opens up to a six and a half foot bed. Because that's their all electric ATV, right? Yep. And you can pull those ramps out of the tailgate, roll up. And then he's going to plug that in. It's got a 110 and 220 volt outlet in the back. And in these back wings, um, there's actually storage space. So once that cover's down, it can roll down and lock. And you can keep all your tools. There's also a front trunk like my car has. And it's got air suspension so that um, you wouldn't have to have an air compressor with you. You can just tap into the oh, really? air line. Okay. And so it can replace your generator, your air compressor. And apparently that cover is supposed to be hard enough that you can walk on it. I don't know if they actually tested that or, or that's just like it <laughs> will be once the window they, thing, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That 500 mile range is pretty impressive. I mean, that's not too bad for an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. Cover most people's daily driving, you know, for the whole week. Really. That's yeah. the 70 grand tri motor model. Yeah. yeah. What was the mileage on the the cheaper one? It's like 300. Uh, 250 plus on the lowest range one. And so this is just kind of it driving around, so you can get kind of get a better sense <clears> of it. See the, and that thing rolls back all the way down and under the under the back seats. Oh, really? Right. So yeah, if you have it out, very completely. Is this like some of the Tesla SUVs that they can't roll them? I don't know if it'll be that low to the ground, but it's got um, four inches each way of travel on the suspension and a clearance height of uh, 16 inches. Well, I'd be interested to see what that thing could actually do, like off-road. Yeah, hook it on. Yeah. 
Go get on a bias castle and see if you can get across the pressure and get out on the lake, you know? Yeah. 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 16 is a big number. Not your mouth. No. Yeah, it's not bad. So that's the interior. I don't know if you've seen a Model 3. It's got a center screen and then because of the Maltano covers up in the back, they have, uh, you wouldn't be able to see out the back. So the rear view is actually a monitor from a camera. Oh, so really? Okay. No and I think the side mirrors <laughs> there are going to be monitors too. The, then this one has self drive too, doesn't it? Yeah, it'll have the self driving. That's a prototype, not street legal, no headlights, taillights yet. Uh, there are headlights and points. <coughs> they're just there. getting I don't, there? I don't, yeah. I don't know if they're. You just can't see them. So, like. That rolled up on stage like that, and I'm like, what the heck is this? Like, that's, <laughs> that's not a pickup. And then I kind of had to dig to find some of that other stuff I'm telling you. I think the electric concept is cool. I think that it'd be tough in some place like, I don't know how those batteries do in the cold. In some place like Bemidji, where I'm out ice fishing and it's going to be negative 30 for, you know, eight or 10 hours, that might be a little bit scary to, to go hop in and all of a sudden your battery's dead. But I've, I mean, heck, I've been looking forward to an electric truck for years. Just due to the fact that you can plug it in, you know. That, come home at the end of the long day, plug it in, and that's pretty sweet. It looked like it had a decent amount of room in the back. I mean, they parked the floor. Oh, how, how, how heavy is it, like, compared to a standard truck? Is it, it like, much lighter? Stainless, or, though, I mean, what's stainless? Well, there, it's that's gonna, the idea with the stainless is the it's going to have more of an exoskeleton than a body on frame. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what the weight is now, but yeah, that is a concern, especially if you're taking it out yeah. ice fishing. Right. Like, or just for towing yeah, wise, you know, yeah. if whatever so you're towing is going well, I mean, if you're lighter. thinking too, like go, going across like a bridge's axle to axle weight. Yeah. For, for that, especially if you're, if you're hauling, uh, like, you know, the ice castle that weighs. What is it like? 5,500 5, 5, yeah. pounds, private gear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean you're looking at, <clears throat> and that's three three axles at that point. Well, just one on the or base cast, one on the truck cast, cast two. two. What does it do for interior cab, either heat or AC? How does that work? Uh, it's just the, the, it runs a heater. I mean, it would be just like my car where you get in, it warms up. You can pre-warm it. I was assuming it would have the, the seat heaters. In the thing, AC. Um, it's fine in my car. So the engine, I saw a fan in the front. So the engine gets hot and it has coolant and works with a heater core like a passenger car or truck does now. No, there's no engine. So it's a so it's, it's two uh, electric motors. So it heats something it heats, gets heated. Yeah, something gets heated. Uh, yeah, some kind of heater probably around the pulse air something like, yeah, just, just like, like a antifreeze, blower. and that would heat hmm. yeah. tubes, tubes and. Yeah. Is it four wheel drive? Oh, it's all yeah. drive, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The cheapest model will be uh, single, I think, rear wheel drive, and then the, the middle is dual motor, and then the high end is, is tri motor. So. Well, I didn't think it was priced out of the market. People are paying that right. for yeah. everything nowadays. I mean, my dad's three quarters. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised right. to tell you that, that it isn't priced out. Right. But. Stainless is always nice, and you start talking about weight. You know, you look at your pickup truck box, and you got a wall here, and you got a wall here. That's stainless has got one wall, right? Yeah. yeah. So there's an offset there, and some of that. I was looking at the interior, though. It didn't look like it was super roomy, which was like for you know us larger, taller individuals getting in and out of that thing. If I got boots on and all my gear, all of a sudden, next thing you know, it looks like it might be a little bit of a tight fit. In the test rides, they had I didn't download one, but. In the test rides they had on YouTube, they had three adult men sitting in the back, and they said there was plenty of room in heaven. Okay. So, so maybe the, the image so, just didn't quite yeah, do it justice then. Apparently, people were saying when you open the door, it's like, how did you get this much space? Oh, really? Because the truck looks big, but it doesn't look like there would be that much mm -hmm. interior space. So. I want to know how good the all-wheel drive is on it. It's yeah. like, you know, like, if it's like good. In, in rough terrain, it's, right. you know, you're going to have to have the locking differentials. And or if each motor runs the wheels independently or whatever, and you hit the gas and you're actually good to go. I mean, it might actually be pretty solid there. I just think for everyday uses, though, as long as you got the braking power and the towing power to do it, it would be a sufficient vehicle. Right. I think that's, the only, that's the only thing I'd yeah. worry about is just being a little I don't see anything about the tow rating. Yeah, but I don't know how you measure that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like for you with the electric capacity in the back there, it'd be kind of sweet to be able to run up on a job and use that to cut a little bit of wood if you had to without pulling out your generator yeah, and stuff. Yeah, potentially. That'd be kind of nice. 
I'm yeah. also just thinking though, like for the overall look of it, that's just way too boxy for yeah. for a you know everyday everyday guy that would use use the truck as. It looks like a stealth everyday. bomber to me, right? Like yeah. Yeah, if, you I, know? if I was a contractor and I pulled up to someone's house and they looked out the window and seen Scott pulling up in that, <laughs> you think, you know, <laughs> think you're gonna charge him too much? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It kind of looks like something like, like you know. know when you're a kid, you draw some yeah. futuristic That's vehicle. That's why you drive that rusty pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> every single yeah. one of them. Get all the questions out in the conversation. No, it, yeah. My question is, how many of our fat asses can we fit in that thing after the food we just ate? That's yeah. what I really want. Yeah. 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 I'd like that tailgate yeah. with the Rams. We don't get That's pretty freaking sweet. That's That's pretty pretty well. the back. That's right. That would be, for myself, as like, because I don't use a truck to haul like work stuff the way that my brother does. I use my truck to haul like deer hunting supplies, fishing stuff. So like that ramp in the back would actually be pretty sweet. Put a four wheeler right up in the back. You don't even need to put a trailer on. You know, and then away you go. Yeah, I think I think that would be a good like option, like to get you know you pay the yeah. extra extra for it. But for no, sure, I didn't I see a receiver hitch on there. I'm assuming that there's got to be holes for a. Receiver yeah. hitch or at least, yeah, yeah, able to attach the towing package to the, mm -hmm. to the chassis. And then I wonder too, like if you were to try to put a camper in the bed or something like that, is it going to be the same dimensions as a regular truck bed? Do we know? Like where it's X amount of inches between the wheel wells, like four feet or whatever. If, 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 if it was, it wouldn't be. Yeah, that's, but, but the yeah, width. Six foot, yeah, six Because that's the length of the bed that I got, but I'm wondering the width. Though. But the width, no, width, width with like wheel wells, sure if, width, if, if they had them in there. But there weren't, close, there aren't though. wheel humps on the inside. Okay. okay. Flat, so where does this thing fall in the size of pickups? You know, you got like small trucks like a Ranger, and then you got a full size pickup. Is it somewhere in the middle, or is it more towards? It's between the smallest F-150 and the largest F-150. Oh, okay. So it's actually like a decent size pickup that is yeah yeah dual or uh what, what dual cab so like a, yeah it would be yeah, like a, a, a quad cab or with yeah, a, with like a, a quad cab with a third, third door option maybe like the i like think it'd be all four of them yeah or just all four quad cab that's kind of cool well the six six <clears throat> that's a pretty good size bed because most of the trucks you see nowadays have um, the, five six the little dinky yeah. five footers or the five six and it's like I went to put yeah. my level for hanging doors into a guy's truck one day and it went in and dunk it stopped the front <laughs> of the end gate and I'm like, oh yeah, that's yeah. right, this is one of those little grocery getter rear ends. I wonder if it's like the other Tesla cars too with their weight being so low that it does really well in the snow. I bet you that, I mean, it probably yeah, would be pretty good. I would good. guess so with those tires yeah. on it, I would guess it's... Plenty of ground clearance too. It'd be kind of cool to see how they do the first winter or two in oh, yeah? the cold weather and then go from there. Because yeah. I do like the concept of an electric car. I think that that is something that in the future will be a really handy thing for people like me who I only drive a set number of miles a day. I'm not going to drive 500 miles in a day. I'm, I'm going to drive, you know, I think every day I drive 49 total miles. I drive 24 to work, 4 to my other job, and then the 25 back. So, I mean, that would be awesome. Do you have to have a special charger at your house then or can you just plug it in like in uh, your We garage? just put a 240 volt outlet in our garage and then it comes with a connector you can plug in. So that's what we did. But You know, I just thought about with that ramp that's actually would be really cool. When you shoot a deer and you're by yourself and you got to get that sucker in the back of the truck. Yeah, and it's up there. You drag it up the ramp instead of trying to hoist that sucker up onto the tailgate and try to like flip it up there that would actually I'm be pretty okay sweet with yeah. although that is a good problem to have yeah, yeah. 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 That's, like, that's like when i hunt the public land you don't worry about how you're going to get it out you got to kill it first and then, <laughs> then you put you piece it together you know find a hill back up there. is that uh so the tunnel cover on there is that fully waterproof yep i'm not sure but there there are lights in the in the bed of it <clears throat> and i think it would be heated too or you'd be able to turn heat on there because people were saying, well, what if it freezes, you know, and then that track yeah. doesn't want to go yeah. by. I would think there would be heating in there. Okay. To, and I wonder how that. deep it is, too, because, like, the reason I like having a topper is because then I can stack my crap too deep in there. You know, I throw a cooler up in there, like, a yeah. directly cooler, plus the deer stands and the target goes up on top, and I get that extra height. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that tunnel cover, if, you, if they'd ever come out with some kind of, like, a topper option for them or whatever. Or if that tunnel cover is just going to be what they have for that. <coughs> if you have either hatch open, or either down or up in the back, you're open right into the passenger compartment. Right. Uh, well, no, there's a glass. There is. Yeah. So oh, there's, okay. a, there's a separator there. Cool concept, though. I'd like it. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see how well they do. I want to. I want to see one of those, one of those things actually in action, pulling a trailer down the road and like do the stuff that we yeah. do with our trucks all the time. Yeah, My vehicles the are design normal, 20 years old, so yeah, maybe in 20, yeah. 25 years. Yeah, <laughs> I am. A, I am impressed. So you with can have one of these in 2039. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
when, when everybody stops expecting you to have a rusty truck to drive <laughs> up in. Uh, He'll be painting rust on the side. Yeah. 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 Just so his customers won't think he's overcharging. Yeah. <laughs> there is some truth to that, though, I think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yeah, a you want to look professional, but not like over the top. I think it's yeah. a fine line. Yeah. You might be on the wrong side of that line, buddy. They, they're probably giving you work because they think you're starving to death. Well, I'm not a salesman yeah. either. They normally he's, know. He's dumb like a fox. <laughs> <laughs> They, they normally know something about me before I get to their house anyway, so. True. Well, I think the price of the base one has me more interested just to be able to look at it because, you know, in five or six years, I actually will be looking for a New York truck. And at that point in time, maybe a guy could pick up one of those. And the design is pretty radical. I, I like my classic looking trucks. I actually like the trucks that are older than even the newer ones now just because they start to look like a spaceship to me. Um, I mean, he just got a minivan, and I looked at that thing on the inside, and I'm like, oh my god, we're going to go up to the frickin' moon in this thing. <laughs> you know, it's got some crazy, like, side view cameras and stuff, but all that stuff is actually kind of cool, though. Like, I, 20 years ago, you know, nobody had electric start in their cars, and now everybody has it, so maybe this is the thing that in 20 years everybody will have that kind of stuff. I just wish it wasn't quite so stealth bomber -y, though. I just think of it like an avalanche or a yeah. Hummer or... A Jeep or some of these, you know, off, not off the wall, but different style like that, maybe in line with those, and it takes a little while for people to buy into right. it. And get more to the right people, yeah. they they see it and they love it, I'm sure, but it can have the opposite effect as well. well there's there's three ways for a boy to fall in love with a vehicle. One is on site, from, from the looks of it outside. The other is when you sit in it and at the command center, and then the last one that comes later is functionality. How does it fit what you want and how can it surprise you on what it can do? So you got three chances to get somebody, but you only get two chances to sell it. Yeah. Other than that, it's word of mouth because it's so good for him that he wants one. Yeah. Yeah. Does it not make yeah. noise though? Because one of my favorite things in the whole world is when I start my truck and then I take off and drive the first noise that that exhaust makes. I always love that. <laughs> If this thing doesn't make noise and I'm just in stealth mode all the time. Mm -hmm. Although you can sneak up on the deer spots. I, I was guy. just going to say, the deer I won't mean, hear you coming. They will never hear you coming. I wonder if you can custom custom make it that you get the, the little oh. uh, sound, oh. sound bite for, you know, the, the yeah. five seconds of... <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> there we go. go. Get it pumped into yeah. your radio system every time you start it. But I would assume that like any, any, any type of uh, bells and whistles that you would have on a normal Tesla, that you would... It, it, the, the truck would have it. Yep. And yeah, it, so it'd be it'll just have depending the, on the package that you want to buy. Yeah, it'll have the standard autopilot, um, like lane keeping and adaptive cruise control in it, and um, sentry mode. So like, that to me was another like, oh, if I had my tools and stuff in the back and locked it and walked away, somebody comes and starts messing with the truck. And to the cops, you got, here are their faces, here are the guys that did it. Oh, jeez. Oh, and then it's like, oh, okay, well, we caught them. And all that stuff just comes standard, you don't have to get, that's not all options, it just is what comes with and you buy it. That's what, yeah, that's what comes with all the new ones. I'm not going to lie to you, that self-driving <laughs> thing kind of makes me nervous just because I like to drive myself and I, I feel like I'd have to learn to trust that. I don't know about you guys, but like I I feel like I do a, a, such a good job of watching for the deer that are going to run out and all that stuff. I'm not really so much worried about the road conditions or the, the traffic, but where I live there's deer on the road every day, all day. And, you know, I, I don't know how a, a vehicle can sense them in the same way that I can look up and see the ridge that that deer's going to cross on and know that it's going to be there. Is that, do they have anything on them for like, are they preventing accidents with that kind of stuff? Or yeah, has, yeah they have radar and then ultrasonic sensors that also, and then the cameras are looking for that. Hmm. What I do, especially on times like that, is... I put it on and then it lets, like, it stays in the lane and all that stuff and you got to keep your hand on the wheel. Um, but then I can look closer for deer without worrying about, like, am I going to, you know, not follow this curve right or something. <coughs> but, yeah, I mean, that kind of stuff you get used to or you don't even have to use it. I mean, I want to um, see one of those things actually take off and, like, launch at 100% throttle, just give it and see what happens. With that all-wheel drive, see how well it can hook and just jump. Well, that tri that tri motor sort of zero sixty and two point nine. That's yeah. I mean, that's yeah. for a truck. The new Lamborghini they just unveiled is about the same. Yeah, I th yeah, they were just 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 under, but yeah, like, and that and that's 
six hundred horsepower and you know. That tells yeah. me it's not that heavy. I mean, like, the second you touch the, the throttle, you know, it's all there instantly. Yeah, yeah which no, makes there's me wonder no though, like you get the head snap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On dry roads, that'd be really fun. But man, you you, you tap that throttle one notch too much when it's icy. Who boy. Is it a gas pedal or is it like? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a it's a series of Frank. <laughs> it's thought. It's, 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 it's Frankenstein <laughs> switches. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. It's just getting hmm. some brake pedal, but you can get in hydrostatic like your <laughs> horse. <laughs> but, there you go. but it will have like regenerative braking, like mine does. What's the cost to maintain something like that? And I guess what breaks down on an electric truck, like. You wash, need tires. Washer fluid, tires. Well, a lot of the um, same components aren't going to change, just like, you know, the drivetrain. I mean, you're going to have to supply some sort of power to all four wheels mm -hmm. without, um, unless you're going to have four independent motors. That's the only way you'd have. Well, so you there's need, a differential and a drive shaft. And there's no like drive that. shaft because it's I either driving just the two, yeah. One motor drives either the back two wheels on the low end version or the dual motor would run the back front two and the bit. front two. Okay, What's so the third one do? The third one is two in the back and one in the front. <clears throat> so um, it just gives more power <laughs> over the back. And then... Uh, I want to see somebody go all whips and shit. Did you find the beaters? I mean, Did I actually would drive one though. Like if I, could, if I had an option to test drive one for a week and just see, it would be fun. Just to get to see if that's like a, a realistic thing for our future, you know? I mean, because we're all... We're all outdoorsmen. We do that kind of stuff, and it'd be fun to actually see it. Like, can this fit with what we do? Based on the fact that you know, people who design this probably are maybe not outdoorsmen. You know, they might be, but it'd be good to push it to like the limits and yeah. see what it could. I want to get that sucker stuck in the mud somewhere, and yeah. then see what it takes to pull it out, and then drive I it across do the that lake. With my truck, I have now. Why would I? Pass I think, a Tesla I think if you sit other. inside of this thing, you start going gaga, and then when you touch the touch that thing. <laughs> You'll be reaching Woo! for your pen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it'll be the wow factor all over again. But can we get it in camouflage though, so it's really stealth bomb? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That'd be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they're talking about like, oh, we could wrap it in this or wrap it in that or like. I want an OD like, green one. Yeah. With big black wheels. That's what I want. Got the wheels already. There you go. <laughs> Well, thank you guys. I, yeah, you uh, bet. It's our pleasure. And Tesla, yeah. it's time for pie. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. I always think it's important to get the opinions of people who aren't in the EV world or even familiar with Tesla, especially in this case where the truck is such a unique item. Their questions and concerns aren't just for Tesla. They're going to be applicable to any truck being offered by any of the major manufacturers or Rivian and Bollinger. These are the things that real truck owners are going to be asking about. And so I think it's important to take time and listen to their feedback. Even if some of these are already taken care of or easily dismissed with more information, it's the kind of thing that's going to have to come out. Now I know Ford's doing a pretty good job of that with their marketing. Tesla doesn't market, but they may need to do some demos, some off-roading things, um, even if it's just putting videos up on their YouTube channel so people can get a sense of what this truck can do. I'm really interested to see what the future holds, and I'm excited for this new product, and I hope other people are too. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.